I'm Christina, and I'm from East Carolina University. I'm Charlie, and I'm from the University of California, Berkeley. Our mentors are Kaylin Bryan and Dr. Adrian Peter. Our project was focused on time series classification using a new signal analysis method called the wavelet scattering transform. Two main steps of time series classification are feature extraction and data labeling. A feature extractor, phi, creates a new representation of the input signal. A good feature extractor has the following properties. It must be invariant to local time shifts. This means that a signal and its shift diversion will have the same feature space representation. Also, it must be stable under time warping deformations, meaning that a signal and its slightly time warped version will be mapped closely in the feature space. It also retains vital information such as frequency content. The wavelet scattering transform possesses all of these properties. In order to extract features, we use wave-like oscillations called wavelets, which can be scaled and shifted to best fit the signal. By creating a linear combination of wavelets, we can create new signal representation. We operate on the signal with a wavelet in order to generate a set of coefficients, which displays the similarity between the wavelet and the signal. These coefficients create a new representation of the original signal containing time and local frequency. This process is referred to as a wavelet transform, and it is the foundation of the wavelet scattering transform. We take our original signal and slice a portion of window size T to compute the scattering coefficients. First, the signal is filtered with a low pass filter, phi, which yields an averaging of the signal and provides invariance to local time shifting. The second step is to create a new signal representation by filtering the signal again with the high pass filter, psi, and taking the modulus. High pass filtering retains detailed information about the signal, which is often lost by other feature extraction methods. We iterate this process by filtering the new representation from the previous layer's high pass output with both low pass and high pass filters, and then we take the modulus of the high pass filtered output. This process continues for the desired number of layers. The output of low pass filtering yields the scattering coefficients that represent the signal at every layer. The time window is then moved to the next one, and the process is repeated. Currently, the feature vectors are unlabeled. These vectors are fed into a classifier which is trained to correctly categorize the signal. One classifier that can be used for data labeling is k nearest neighbors, where k is some input integer specifying the number of nearest training data points to compare our feature vectors to. The majority vote is used to obtain the class label, and this process is repeated for each feature vector. We applied the wavelet scattering transform with the k-nearest neighbors classifier to several UCR time series datasets and obtained the following accuracies. Our experiments showed that the wavelet scattering transform is a promising feature extractor for time series classification, but more testing is required to confirm its viability. Looking forward, changes to the type of wavelet, number of layers, and type of classifier can be explored to better assess performance.